Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present our study about magnetic resonance imaging evaluation of the timing of cerebral embolization. Magnetic resonance imaging have been performed during years to evaluate the incidence of ischemic lesion during conventional surgery, and Stoltz reported in 2004 a rate of 38% of ischemic lesion in the brain after conventional surgery. Ganem and his team reported a rate of 72% of embolization after transfemoral core valve use. And we reported this year a rate of 90% embolization in transfemoral group and 92% in transapical group using Edward Sapien's valve. This study was performed initially to demonstrate that the um, embolization should occur during aortic arch manipulation and we were expecting to have less embolization during transapical than transfemoral, but it's not the case. So the question of when do we embolize remain open. So we carried on to include transfemoral, transapical patients compared to surgery, and we put the hypothesis that the embolization is nothing to do with the aortic arch manipulation, but, but it's due to the uh, native valve dilation that's the reason why in the second paper we put it a new group, balloon valvuloplasty without valve implantation. Since three years we have performed 117 patients. The study protocol is a single center prospective non-randomized trial. We perform diffusion weighted MRI of the brain 24 hours before the procedure and two days after the procedure, associated with a neurological examination with independent neurologist. Inclusion criteria are quite simple. All patients selected for TAVI using Edwards valve were included in the study. Exclusion criteria are non-consented patient, contraindication for MRI like claustrophobia, pacemaker, or cerebral clip, and in post-op, patient condition that did not permit MRI within the delay were excluded of the study. This is our demographic. The first group is the transfemoral group, the second group is the transapical group, and as you can see, the transapical patients are sicker than the femoral patient, and the balloon group is the sickest patient of this study with a very high rate of NIHA class classification and a lower ejection fraction. This is the pre-op MRI performed in a patient, then we compare those study with the post-op MRI and we try to identify the, the number of new ischemic lesion, the location of the lesion, and we calculate the volume of the lesion. And what we found is we found a very high rate of embolization again with 29, 22, uh, 92% for transfemoral, 94% for transapical and a very low rate of embolization for balloon valvuloplasty alone without valve implantation and surgery. There is no difference between TF and TA and no difference between balloon and surgery, but there is a clear difference between TAVI and non-TAVI groups. Is this ischemic lesion have clinical stroke incidence? Yes, we have only one patient over the 77 patients studied who had a stroke. It was in the TAVI group. It was an 88 years old man who who had a previous cardiac operation, sleep apnea syndrome, um, multiple uh, vascular perif peripheral disease. However, the clinical incidence is only uh, according to a sensitive motorist examination. We did not perform any neurocognitive testing on those patients. If we look at the mean number of new lesions, you see that we have 5.4 new lesions in the transfemoral group and even more in the transapical group and a very low rate of lesion in the balloon group. Again, there is no difference between balloon and surgery and TA and TF and a clear difference between TAVI and non-TAVI groups. Now, if you look at the mean volume of lesion, these data are very awful for transapical because the volume of lesion are very high, and there is a clear difference between transfemoral and transapical. We did not have any explanation on that, and there is a clear difference between TAVI group and non-TAVI group. Multivariate analysis have been performed, and we only noticed that the age and the Euroscar are predicted factors. So the question of when do we embolize, the second paper confirmed the data of the first paper with a high rate of embolization during TAVI, 
And embolization does not occur during valve dilation because the rate of embolization is very low with balloon valvuloplasty, 27%, like in surgery. So in conclusion, embolism may occur during valve positioning or deployment. And when you see the high rate of ischemic lesions, neurological protection device is mandatory. And I would like to remind you that conventional surgery still remains safer than any other procedure. Thank you very much for your attention.